Hi, my name is Philipp Sacher and I'm a Specialist Solutions Architect for IoT at Amazon Web Services. I will talk about AWS IoT Core and Amazon TimeStream integration. That means how you can ingest data from your IoT devices into Amazon TimeStream. What I'm going to cover is the architecture to ingest IoT data, what an IoT rule is and how it works, how to create a database and table in Amazon TimeStream, create an IoT rule, ingest data into AWS IoT Core with a data generating script, do some simple queries and do some basic troubleshooting. There's also a brief story behind this example setup. You have sensors in buildings which measure humidity, pressure and temperature. Apart from the measures, the sensors will also report the building name and room number where they are located, as well as the device ID. Let's take a look at the architecture to ingest IoT data into Amazon TimeStream in general. On the left side, you have your IoT devices. They are sending data to AWS IoT Core. A topic rule then ingests data into Amazon TimeStream. Now let's take a look at the topic and message payload. Your devices are sending data by using the MQTT protocol or via HTTPS. These data are published as a JSON object to a so-called topic. In our example, sensors publish to the topic DT slash sensor slash device ID. The device ID is the ID of a particular sensor. In this example, the device ID is sensor underline 02. In the message payload, you can find the measures, humidity, pressure and temperature and the dimensions, device ID, building and room. Dimensions and measures are terms from Amazon TimeStream. An entry in Amazon TimeStream contains dimensions and measures. Dimensions are attributes that describes the metadata of the time series and measures are attributes that describe the data of the time series. And here you can see the IoT rule which ingests data into Amazon TimeStream. An IoT rule consists of a SQL statement, a topic filter and a rule action. With a SQL statement you select humidity, pressure and temperature from the topic DT slash sensor slash hash. Hash is an MQTT wildcard. The wildcard is used here to receive messages published by all sensors. Values extracted by the select statement are stored as measures in Amazon TimeStream. In the rule action for Amazon TimeStream, you define which dimensions should be stored. Each dimension consists of a name value pair. In this example, we use the values from the message payload. And now I will show you how to implement this architecture. In the first step, I will create a database and a table in Amazon TimeStream. Here you can see the TimeStream section of the AWS Management Console. I chose Create Database and then Standard Database. I will use IoT for my database name. Leave encryption settings as they are and create database. Now I can uh, create a table here under tables, create a table. I will choose the database IoT just, that I just created. Use uh, sensor data as my table name. And I will pick some arbitrary values here for the data retention, like one day for memory store retention and five days for magnetic store retention. Create the table and that's it. I have created a database named IoT and a table named sensor data within that database. Now I'm going to create an IoT rule. I'm using the IoT core section of the AWS Management Console. Rules are created under Act Rules Create a rule, choose a meaningful name. I will use to time stream rule as a name and define the SQL statement to select data from our messages. We will select humidity, pressure and temperature from the topic 
dt slash sensor slash hash. Next, I'm going to add an action, in this case, the time stream action, and figure action. I need to choose a database. I will use the database that I just created, IoT, and the table sensor data. Now I need to define the dimensions. I will use the device ID and get it from the message payload. Another dimension is the building. We will also get the value from the message payload. And we will also have the room in our time stream database. Also from the message payload. In the ne next step, we need to define a role or to create a role which uh, grants AWS IoT permissions to write into Amazon TimeStream. Create a role. I will use the name IoT data to TimeStream role. Create the role. A policy is attached automatically that allows the IoT service to write into Amazon TimeStream. Then I choose Add Action and finally create the rule. And here you can see the newly created rule to TimeStream rule for ingesting data from IoT Core into Amazon TimeStream. We need to generate some data to populate the Amazon TimeStream table. Data are generated by a script. The script is implemented in Python 3 and uses Boto 3, the Amazon Web Services SDK for Python, to publish messages to IoT Core. To set up the environment for the script, you need to install Boto 3 and set up authentication credentials. You must associate the permission to publish to IoT with your credentials. Installation of Boto 3 and setting up credentials is covered in the Boto 3 documentation. I will run the script on an AWS Cloud9 IDE. In my setup, I have attached an instance profile to my AWS Cloud9 instance, which allows me to publish data to AWS IoT. But you can launch the script in any other environment which meets the requirements to run it. Now let's start the script. It's called Sensor Data. You can see here activities and messages are published to AWS IoT Core. To verify that messages are reaching AWS IoT, you can use the MQTT test client, which is built into the management console. Here we have the AWS IoT management console. You find the client on a test. And then we will subscribe to a topic. DT slash sensor slash hash. Subscribe. As you can see, messages are arriving at AWS IoT. That looks good so far. And now I will continue with some database queries. The Amazon TimeStream console has a built-in query editor that I will use for some queries. How many rows do we have in the sensor data table? Now I run the query. That yields over 40,000 rows. As we have entries in the table, that means that our setup with ingesting data to AWS IoT Core and then write the data with an IoT rule to Amazon TimeStream is wor working. Now let's find out which buildings do we have in the table. Select distinct building from IoT sensor data. You can see here three buildings named Doppler, Kumo and Day1. And now we can also have a closer look at the data, for example, from the building Day1. Select 
select all data from IoT sensor data where building is day one. Run it. And you can see here a lot of results. You can see here the sensor ID, building name, the room number, a measure value and a measure name, and also the time when the data were ingested into Amazon TimeStream. These were some very basic queries to verify that the whole setup is working. If you want to visualize your data, you can use, for example, Grafana, which is a analytics and monitoring solution. Please take a look at our Getting Started video, how to visualize your TimeStream data by creating dashboards in Grafana. Finally, some words about troubleshooting. In case your setup is not working as expected, it can have several reasons. One option to find the root cause is to use Amazon CloudWatch, which is our monitoring service. When you enable logging for IoT Core, logs are written to Amazon CloudWatch. Logging can be enabled for IoT Core under Settings, as you can see here. You can use CloudWatch Insights to query your logs. In the CloudWatch console, under Logs, select Insights and define your query. I want to know what the IoT rule is doing to ingest data into Amazon TimeStream. I'm choosing the log groups for IoT, that is AWS IoT Logs V2, and add a filter to the predefined query. I will use a filter for the rule name. Our rule was name to time stream rule and I will run the query. And here you can see the results. You can see also a log level here within the results. And this is only one example how CloudWatch Insights works. You can search other events, for example, if your devices are ingesting data properly into AWS, IoT, and much, much more. Yeah, with that, we are at the end of this short quick start, and you have learned how to ingest data from your IoT devices with AWS IoT Core into Amazon TimeStream. Thank you for your attention.